Leidenberg, which means town of suffering, lies at the foot of the Long Tom Pass and occupies a special place in the history of the Transvaal. The company of fur tracker leader Alvis Potkitter founded it in 1850. The Toyota dealer 400 certainly broke the mold when it came to doing things differently. One such innovation was a 400 meter sprint along the main road with 1,000 rand up for grabs for the first crew to top 200 kilometers an hour or 500 rand for the first crew to set the fastest time. Spectators from Leidenberg and neighboring towns turned out in full force to witness the spectacle and indulge in some of the free food provided by Leidenberg Toyota. It's always exciting to come to a new event and it's great, it's great to come to new places that we haven't been going for the last 10 years but yeah, it is a bit unknown, you don't quite know what to expect, it's a whole new set of organisation, you're not quite sure how the marking is and if they're going to do it as we used to, which we found out quickly in the time trial yesterday, the marking wasn't quite uh, what we are used to so yeah, it's a bit of an unknown but we're looking forward to it, it's a lovely day, it's going to be as hot as hell, we're going to sweat but we're ready for it. I'm expecting a few surprises on the route. You said the route's very tight. Yesterday we experienced that. It's very, very, very tight. And um, you can take no chances on the route. Uh, the moment you think you must go a little bit farther, you're off the road. So uh, uh, I'm glad we're starting at 6 so that there's a few guys ahead of me that can sort of sweep the road for me. <laughs> and we will stay in the dust and... Uh, if something happened to them, uh, we will we'll be there. Oh, just for this 400 meter sprint, I thought Johan is always navigating it. He may have a little bit of fun as well. So uh, he's going to take the driving there and I'll resume driving duties at the start there. A lot more power, uh, something to respect, but yeah, we kept it together yesterday and we, yeah, we, we feel we're in a comfortable position. Race organizer Vili Duplessis got proceedings underway. <laughs> with Krobler and Leek as they smoked the opposition and clocked 140 kilometers an hour. Ford versus Nissan. and Griffith powered away from Woolridge and Shorthammer and also clocked 140 kilometers an hour with a Ford only managing 131 k's an hour. Reineck and Houghton were up against Corbett and Moore. The lightweight Audi V8 powered bat showed the Toyota a clean pair of heels. Class D Nissan versus Class A Bat. Clearly a mismatch, but then it was all just for fun. Gibson and Brown clocked 139 kilometers an hour and were the fastest of the special vehicles. Four-cylinder Toyota power took on six-cylinder Nissan power. For a moment it looked as if Cronian Birkin would get the better of Duplessis and Baker. But in the end, the Nissan edged out the Toyota by only one kilometer an hour. The route for the Toyota dealer 400 included a 120 kilometer section from Leidenberg to Buttfontein, followed by two laps of a 107 kilometer loop. The rain included rocky outcrops, some muddy patches and fast anthill strewn sections, which would catch many crews unaware. The official start of the Toyota Dealer 400 at the Leidenberg airfield and Gary Berthold and Brandon Harkers led the 48 car field away in the adrenalized corporate entertainment bat. Honest Robler and Richard Leake were next away in the proudly South African Nissan Hardbody.
Unfortunately, a stiff breeze minimized the dust problem for Grobler and Leek, who started 33 seconds behind the bat. But teammates Duncan Foss and Mike Griffith, who only started nine seconds behind them, would soon be faced with visibility problems. Team Ford Racing pair Woolridge and Schulthammer were content to play a waiting game this early in the race, but one suspects that the same could not be said for Mark Corbett and John Moore, who were hell-bent on catching race leaders Berthold and Harkers. Poor visibility was now becoming a major problem, as the onboard view from the Castro Toyota Land Cruiser shows. Like Woolridge and Schulthammer, Reinecke and Houghton were hungry for an overall win and adopted a cautious approach in the opening stages of the race. And so too were uh, Class A debutants Clint Gibson and Mike Brown in the Presidium Financial Services bat, which Belgian Gregoire de Mavius drove in the Sun City 400. Class D leaders could see a lot of and Johan Gerber were fifth in the production vehicle category and in with a chance of winning the Class D championship. While Class E championship leaders Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin needed a class win to clinch the Class E championship with one more race to go. They could have done without this overshoot that allowed Duplessis and Baker to sneak by in the Class D Nissan. On board with Hannes Grobler and Richard Leek as they, like the rest of the field, struggled to find the route. Berthold and Harkers were about to lose the race lead. The proudly South African Nissan hard body was like it has been all season again at the head of the field and disappearing into the distance. Berthold and Harkers should have been happy to be leading the special vehicle category, but their stated objective this season has been to beat the trucks at their own game, and right now they weren't. Bat racing has been making inroads internationally with Gregoire de Mavius recently ordering eight vehicles, one of which will compete in Dakar 2004. field was tightly bunched with Foss and Griffith who had just got past Berthold and Harkers playing leaders of the pack in the proudly South African Nissan Hardbody. Missing from the lineup were teammates Janil de Villiers and Francois Jordan who had retired from the UAE Desert Challenge earlier in the week and were languishing at an oasis in the desert while the Toyota dealer 400 was in progress. On board with Reineke and Houghton in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. They had got by Corbett and Moore, who, like virtually the entire field, had wrong slotted somewhere along the way, losing hard earned positions and valuable time. Corbett, who is a former winner of the Roof of Africa, is well known for his hard-charging style and would not let this incident affect his performance in the Audi V8-powered Century Property Developments bat. He has had a trouble-filled season and wanted nothing more than to walk away with the special vehicle category laurels on the inaugural Toyota Dealer 400. Clint Gibson and Mike Brown had the same objective in mind and were piling on the pressure in the Presidium Financial Services bat. Gibson picked up three successive Class B wins before moving up to the ultra-competitive Class A. Yet again, Mark Renier and Chris Birkin were mixing it with the big guns in their Class E Castrol Toyota Hilux 2.7i. The pair was eighth overall and fifth in the production vehicle category, with their Class E rivals nowhere in sight. GBS Nissan Racing crew could see Labus Kachny and Johan Gerber had dropped to place but still had matters in control in Class D. Cliff and Louis Weichelt had made up three positions and were tenth overall and second in Class D in the diesel-powered N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser.
Nissan Sugar Belt 400 winners Gerald Mundell and Billy Bond had moved up from 24th at the start to 11th overall and 4th in a special vehicle category in the prolonged bat. While Hein Grobler and Gerard Prinsloer, who had started 11th in the GBS Racing Nissan, had dropped to place. Within an Natal Kane Farmers, Manfred Schroeder and Jack Peckham had made up two positions in the Class E Team Ford Racing Ranger and were intent on hunting down class leader Cronier and Birken. The former Class E champions have had a frustrating season and only managed to pick up a class win on the Nissan Sugar Belt 400. Kasi Kutsia and Oki Fari were involved in a battle with the Atlas Copco Chicago pneumatic Jeep in the early stages of the race and managed to get by when the Jeep was sidelined with rear brake caliper problems. They were third in Class E and tenth in the production vehicle category. Reigning Class B champions Marcus Taylor and Mark Deschelaines started 18th in the Rollerback Racing JRE and were now 15th overall, 5th in the Special Vehicle category and the Class B leaders. Johan van der Merwe and his 16-year-old Martinez had gained three places in the Shivani Colt Rodeo but were trailing their Class D rivals by quite a wide margin. Despite losing the four-wheel drive on the Daiko engineering Nissan Sani, Dirk van Rienen and Annemarie Ungerer had managed to move from 20th at the start to 17th overall. Jury and André Duplessis started 22nd and were now 18th overall and 13th in the Class E BB Auto Nissan Hardbody, but had Hannes Steen and Fatih Siegers breathing down their necks in the Toyota Hilux KZTE.